Now yeah. let's bring in Congressman Darrell Issa of the House Judiciary Committee. He just stepped out of that deposition there where Democrats are beginning to ask questions. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Uh, give us Thank some you, insight into what happened behind those closed doors this morning. Well, Bruce Orr is creating a link for us between people who, as earlier was said, had animus, who were in fact desperate to stop candidate Trump from being President Trump, both before and after he became the president-elect. And uh, although Bruce Orr uh, would appear to claim to be uh, without partisan, his wife, since 2015, knowingly worked on the fine dirt on Trump, try to make this connection with the Russians, uh, for which she was paid, and he didn't properly disclose. However, what he said to us today, I think that's critical, is he did disclose this, he said, to FBI officials, and he named names, and that then never ended up getting back to the Department of Justice, to his boss, apparently, and certainly not into these FISA warrants, mm -hmm. which were only justified to tap on behalf of the government, effectively, the, the Trump campaign and then the Trump operation uh, by not making them aware of things which, in fact, Bruce Orr now tells us he did make people aware of. Uh, is Bruce Orr cooperating, essentially? Is he being open with the folks that are asking those questions? Bruce has a poor memory. He seems to not remember a lot of details. Uh, and, you know, poor memories are often claimed by people who want to stick to what they can say and not be caught in perjury. So I would say that when he answers, it's been candid. There's no, been no refusal to an answer any particular question. But he does seem to have a poor memory. And sometimes upon refreshing of that memory, like meeting with people in July rather than August, uh, that's been helpful. Uh, obviously, we're still connecting the dots. We don't have nearly the amount of paper proof we'd like to have, but we do know this. Bruce Orr makes a connection where, as an attorney, he did something he never should have done, which is he became part of the continuity of, of evidence. He became a fact witness, mm -hmm. in, and he, in fact, became part of an investigation that was funded by the Democratic National Committee and Hillary Clinton and pursued by Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, who obviously had real hatred for the president. Uh, so the FBI drops Christopher Steele, the ex-British spy, as a source in November of 2016 mm. because he's essentially leaking to the media. Uh, but then he doesn't leave the picture. We have text messages. Catherine Herridge been has been talking about that in her reporting that or continued to have contact with Steele, that this was sort of a back channel. Uh, is this particularly abnormal? And, and does Bruce Orr behind clo closed doors acknowledge that this was something perhaps that wasn't standard practice? Bruce Orr admitted to us that it never happened in his nearly 30-year career, that he'd never been involved in something just like this. Uh, it's also very clear that, as you say, he became a back channel, willing back channel, but then later the FBI actually sent back the other way that they wanted to talk to him directly. In other words, even after they fired him, he had no credibility. They produced FISA warrants that did not make clear his lack of credibility. They then re-engaged him in some direct fashion. Again, this goes back to this problem that before the election, our government was involved in operation research against candidate Trump. After the election, after he was the president-elect, the famous insurance policy went into effect that clearly led to the special prosecutor in the investigation we're now seeing. And this is what we're uncovering, is the pre Mueller uh, uh, activity that created an environment in which many people, myself included, were willing to deal with a special prosecutor not knowing all the lies the American people and Congress had been told. So quickly, we're running a little short on time now, but uh, Catherine Herridge pointed to something, and I want to know if this is really significant, that Orr's, there was a conflict between what Orr has told uh, uh, people asking questions and what Simpson has said. Is that significant? It is significant. There's also some ambiguity between Orr and Lisa Page, and there's no question at all. We're going to have to go back through the loop to find out which one of them is willing to change their story or face perjury. All right. Thank you very much, Congressman, for joining us. Uh, this will Thank be fascinating you, as the questioning goes on and as things develop further.